Back to our blue furry friend we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sonic Adventure and Adventure 2. Yes, we're doing both. Adventure 2 discussion and one, overview. And, and one other game, which I'll get to. Sorry, but, say that again? I said, and one other game, which we will get to. Yes. But, um, so, Sonic was a big success on the Sega Saturn. Uh, Sega Saturn, so was Sega Saturn. Wow. <laughs> Sega Saturn, wow. Um, so, when the Sega Saturn came around, most people were like, oh, where's the new Sonic game? And we got a compilation. Okay. That's like, what? Uh, and a port of a Genesis game. For the Saturn. Okay. Uh, and a really bad racing game. We were supposed to uh, get a uh, Sonic Extreme game, but that ended up getting canceled. But probably for the better, because it looked it, it looked interesting, but very weird. Um, I think a smart move would have put CD on the Saturn. Yeah, at least I, on Sonic why, Jam. Why didn't they do that? I don't know, but when the new their new console Dreamcast launched, they were like, "We're putting a Sonic game on there," and by God, they did Sonic Adventure. Yeah, and it which, was amazing. At the time. Which is, I think, I think it's still remembered as one of the best games in the series by most people. Yeah, mostly the Sonic and Tails and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so. Yeah, so the difference with this is instead of just playing as Sonic or Tails or Knuckles, you have an assortment of, what, five characters now? Six. Oh, Technically six. seven, which we'll get to. Yeah. You got Sonic, Tails, Knuckles. Knuckles. Uh, um, Amy, Amy from Sonic CD is back. Yeah, the new design and all that, too. Well, they, uh, all have new de- well, they all have new design. Well, Sonic and Knuckles, Knuckles is about the same looking. Well, his Same eyes are tails. different colors now. Ooh, they're yeah, all—they're but... all a bit taller and less pudgy. Yes, they're all blocky and dreamcasty, and I love it. Then there's yeah. uh, clearly the best character in the series, Big the Cat. Okay. <laughs> we'll get the oh, okay. and we get um an interesting character. We get to play as one of Eggman's robots, which is a different angle I wasn't expecting. I thought that was honestly really cool and still is. In terms of just like, wow, this is so, nice. And the, and the gameplay itself is still fun. We'll talk about each character individually. But the gameplay is a lot different than the classic Sonic games. Yeah, it feels like they hybrid, made a hybrid of it. Like, they kind of kept it slightly open-ended. Not by much, but... Like, it's no longer um, a zone with a couple of acts at a boss fight. It's just a giant level, and occasionally there are bosses. Excuse me. And I think there's 11 stages in total, because you got there Sonic are, through all the stages well, except Hot Shelter. Yeah, there are 11 stages between six characters. And we're going to go through each stage individually. We're going to talk about each stage, and we're going to talk about each character. Let's just do it from Sonic's perspective, anyway, because I'm gonna do it. For, I'm gonna do it in the Sonic level order, and then I'll throw in one level somewhere. Mm-hmm. So when you start the game off, you can actually only pick Sonic. Yeah, which is fine. So you have to you have you have to start with Sonic, and um, he start it starts the story starts with them hopping through buildings, and like. He sees the cops and he's like, "Yo, what's going on?" So first off, it's weird he's interacting with people. Like he's interacting with normal humans. It's weird. You forgot the best part. Oh yeah, this is happening. We'll talk about the voice acting later. This is the first Sonic game with voice acting. Yeah, crazy. And like a fucking big weird. water monster just shows up yeah, in like, chaos. What the fuck? <laughs> This is one of the only games I can think of where it starts you immediately in a boss fight. Yeah, I don't think there's any other Sonic game that's done that. I can't think of many games that do that. Where the first thing you do is a boss fight. 
Yeah, but at least you get a grasp of the controls, and you have the homing attack, which is pretty much like, oh, I gotta use that to attack enemies like Chaos here. So it's a good little easy boss for you to get the grasp of this new style of gameplay compared to the Genesis games. Yeah, so um, we'll talk about the controls and the characters in a minute. Let's go through the individual stages. So the first stage you're going... Well, first off, you have the first overworld, the adventure field, which is called Station Square. Yeah, it's it's not um big either. The it's only... None of, them, none of them are big. The only big one is the Mystic Ruins. Yeah, and that's split off into t three sections, I believe. You have... Yes. Great. The main the, area, the, the train. jungle, and then Angel Island. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I always love the oh, the hub worlds. I, I don't know. I, I love just being able to run around, and screw around in between levels. But so um, and each hub world has a set of levels, and I think Egg Carrier only has one. But we'll get to the Egg Carrier. Two, two. Hot Shelter and Sky Deck. Oh, yeah, Hot Shelter. So the first level is Emerald Coast. Great first level and great impressions oh, of how the game will be. For, for, um, you go through this level, it's the first level for Sonic, the third level for Big, and the second level for... So, it's a beautiful stage for the time. And the music is superb. Yeah, what's funny is some of the music that was in it in this game was taken from 3D Blast. And the yeah, and it sounds so much better here. It's beautiful. Like, oh, uh, this this is a really fun first stage, and Sonic 06 tried to emulate it. But Sonic 06 was okay. Yeah, the, it, it failed massively. But it's a great first impression, especially for Sonic, because, like, it gets you really used to controls. It's not very difficult. And it's just a fun level to blaze through. Yeah, and it's not, a, it's not like the classics where it's built vertically and uh, horizontally. It's mostly just follow the pathway. Actually, this is one of the more this is one of the more open levels in the game, to be honest, because there are actually quite a few pathways. Yeah, I mean, like all pathways lead to the same end, but like, say you're at the lighthouse area, you can kind of jump off and go look around on the ground, see what's hiding. I like. That. Oh, so this level is great for speedrunners. Oh my god, and the t the time you need to get the uh, emblem for it is pretty damn tight. Like but if you know if you know how to skip stuff, you're good. And that's where the spin dash comes in. It makes the game so easy to break and make it work in your way in terms right. of how high you want to jump and how far you want to jump. So the it's next stage game. is Windy Valley, which I which is the second level for Sonic, the first level for Tails, and I believe the third level for Gamma. Mm, I think so. Not as strong of a stage as Emerald Coast, in my opinion, but that's a really cool set piece, like with the tornado. Yeah, I wish we got the original beta version of the level. Which that was, was like, a cool thing. Yeah, it was so open and all that stuff. It just felt like a classic Sonic stage, but instead they just kind of cut it down and put that in instead, which... Uh, be, by the way, me. when we're talking about the stage, we're generally speaking talking about Sonic's version, because Sonic's version of the stage is the most complete, full version of the level. Yeah, and you're going to be playing... You, most people that play this game are going to want to play as Sonic the most. Well, he's even, got... Or even Tails. Sonic has the most levels. Most of these levels, you're going to hear me say, well, Sonic did this level. Because the level order we're going in is Sonic's level order. So. And, he goes, and he goes to every level except one. Yeah, and we'll get to that in a minute. But the third level, Casinoopolis, I personally think is Sonic's most boring stage. Yeah, it's repetitive. Well, you can get it done quickly if you go through the sewer, but eh. But one thing that's very nice, and it's something we the franchise we talked about before that they have in this is knights. We in, and at the time, I do I admittedly know, like. I do admittedly like the aesthetic of the pinball games. Oh, yeah. I like, like, I like the music, like, especially the Knights one. Yeah, I, as a kid, it was so freaking cool. And, like, this, was actually Sonic... my first, this was my first introduction to Knights, and I was like, what? What? What is I going even, on here? I didn't even have a name for it, but the fact that, like, I was seeing Sonic just flying through just these a this area and all that stuff it was just so magical at the time. Yeah, so, um, you, you, like, um, 
the sewer area is actually a normal stage. That part's kind of fun, but it's great um, music too. Really yeah. good music. This is the third level for Sonic, the second level for Tails, and Tails the second level for Knuckles. And Tails goes straight to the sewers. Knuckles actually has unique areas in this stage because he's got the upper area that Sonic can't get to. Yes, and I think it works out well for him, honestly. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you hate the Sonic statue, you can break it. And I guess the way to get that is to get a couple thousand rings or so. Yeah, you can make you can make it in Sonic level. I just never have it. There's no reason to do it because I thought, why is there a statue in Knuckles' story now? But now I'm looking back, <clears throat> and it's like Sonic spent all this time making that nice statue, and Knuckles is like, "Fuck you!" and takes down <laughs> the statue. It's like, oh, you dick. I mean, it's not on. Honestly, Sonic stage, you have to get like 400 rings to get through it, and it's kind of annoying. I have one last thing to say right for now about the hub world of Station Square. Is that if you have the Dreamcast version or the PC version with better SADX, you can re-implement this stuff. Uh, there was like Chris, a Christmas event where you have Christmas trees all over Station Square. Uh, you can have like uh, a person's like face model pop up and stuff like that all over the place. Balloons everywhere, Dreamcast symbol stuff everywhere. It just I've seen made that the stuff. Sale. It's actually pretty cool. I, I, yeah, I played through it on that Better SADX, and I was like, this is so cool, and you have interactions yeah, with I, it. Because I have the Dreamcast version, but I don't have I obviously, I can't get that stuff anymore. Yeah, but, you, well, you actually, you can, uh, because some some Chad was able to buy the domain for the Sonic Adventure website, and I believe it's still up. So if you're able to get your Dreamcast online, you can go to that site and download that stuff to your VMU. You'd have to get an uh, Ethernet adapter for your Dreamcast, but that, that, that's a little expensive, you know, $200, $300. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool, I, I, I like that, I like the idea of that stuff. I wish it was the DX port as an unlockable or something. But... Yeah, but they just omitted all that extra stuff. Anyway, the next stage is Ice Cap, back from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which is cool that they brought a level back. But it's so first. short. Yeah, it's honestly probably the easiest level in the game. Like, it's not hard. <laughs> it's a doggy, but yeah. yeah. My dog's going crazy today. <laughs> he agrees. He agrees that the level sucks for the most part. <laughs> I mean, I like it as Tails because it gets to the best part of the stage really quickly. Well, immediately. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's the fourth level for Sonic, the third level for Tails, and the second level for Big. He's like, what? Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, um, it's a it's a stage. Like, it's okay. I, you it's, know what? I'll talk about Big's gameplay when we get there, though. Yeah, well, I, well, well yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, the next stage is uh, Twinkle Park. Yeah, Twinkle Park is really fun. Which is the fifth level for Sonic, the first level for Amy, and the first level for Big, actually. Yeah, it's it starts out with going into like bumper cars and you just race through the area. It's a little jank, but if you figure out how to manipulate the uh, faster, and then it, it's fine. But yeah, uh, yeah, you just drive through it first. It's playing some Sonic 3D Blast music, I believe. Uh, and once you get there, you get to the main stage, and it just Salt your ears with amazing music. You're on a roller coaster, and then you do something like bowling, and then you go through like a merry-go-round to get to the other side, avoiding spike balls. It's crazy how many set pieces this level has for the time, anyway. I love it. And when it comes to uh, breaking it, it's absolutely fun to do because at the very start, after you. Uh, get on the roller coaster, you just go back and you can, there's a platform below the entrance to where you drop down and then you can go onto a platform and go bam, take that and just do a spin dash jump all the way over to a certain section of the stage, skipping about a minute and a half or so of the level. I also, AV has a unique section in this level with the mirrors and stuff. That's honestly pretty cool, but... It's it, would kinda, be, maybe... it was kind of creepy when I was a kid, I'm not going to lie. It is kind of creepy. The music itself didn't help. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but if Amy um, controlled better, then that would have been way more fun. But next, 
Yeah. Next, you have my favorite stage in the game, Speed Highway. Oh, that's a great stage. If, if it's easy to cover, like fly off the stage, though, if you're not good at, you know, uh, what's the word? Understanding Sonic's physics. Yeah, exactly. My dog is going crazy today. <laughs> he's, he's a happy boy. Oh, jeez. Um, um, it's the sixth level for Sonic, the um, first level for Knuckles, and the last level for Tails. I thought, I thought it was the fifth stage for Speed Highway. No, Speed, Speed Highway six. Are you sure? Positive. Huh. Do you have a list? Yeah, I have it open. That's weird. You know, Winkle Park is fifth, and then Speed Highway is six. Hmm. Okay. Because four was Ice Cap, so. Uh, all right. Next I level. mean, it, 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 it's one of the it was one of the most fun stages in the game, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, you've got uh, great, good platforming at the very first part of the level, and then once you get to the second part, it's like, what the hell? Sonic's running down a building. It's playing music in sync with it. Like when you get to the end, the music stops. And then the best, my favorite part of the stage is the at dawn section. The music is absolutely phenomenal. I can't get enough of that. And you have, uh, it's a very open section of the the game. The most open, honestly. Because you can yeah. get in this pathway. You can go that pathway. And there's, it's each, each, each way is distinctive from the last. And there's nice little nooks and crannies to find, you know, items and stuff like that. It's just really fun. I love it. So the next level is also a big favorite of mine, which is a Red Mountain. I love Red Mountain. I like Red, Red Mountain. Red Mountain. Yum. Yum. But I love the like, music. I love how open it is. I love the aesthetic. The music is pretty good, too. It's weird, but it's pretty good. Uh, and then when you get to the second half, you have, like, an, you're in a volcano, really. And there's lava that rises. It's a fun little time. And you see, for some reason, jail cells with things in there. Yeah, I want to know what that is. I've wanted to know what that is for years. <laughs> uh, maybe we're in, maybe we entered hell and those yeah. are prisons. Yeah, so this is the seventh level for Sonic, the third stage for Knuckles, and the fourth stage for Gamma. And it's Next. real. It's a really cool level. I like. And then we have something like a mini game we forgot to mention. Yeah. So Sky there's a Chase. couple of mini games. So there's two Sky Chase sections. You got to play twice each. You play Sky Chase four times total. That's annoying. If you all, like, if you did one as Sonic, if like if you did the first one as Tails and the second one as Sonic, it would be fine. Yeah, but because like you get the easier one to Tails and the harder one to Sonic. That makes sense in my brain, but. I actually got to do it both as both characters. And Tails's are literally back. They're like one right after the other. It's ugh. Yeah, I don't like uh, Sky Chase in this, to be honest, after having to play it so many times. Like, it, Panzer Dragoon, this ain't. What? Like, because they, they're trying to be, like, be a rail shooter. And it's just nowhere near as good as their actual rail shooters here. Uh, Panzer Dragoon. Yeah, I know. Panzer Dragoon is far better of a rail shooter than this freaking mini game. We also we missed even... uh, there's another mini game called Twinkle Circuit, where it's like a bumper car racing. Yeah, it's basically what like take Sonic's like first part of Twinkle Park and make it a full on mini game. I mean, every every character can do it, so. But not every character can access it from the hub world. You have to go into the minigame section in the menus. I think they Gamma. might be able to after you beat the game. There might be a uh, patch, like, right there. Gamma can't get in to Twinkle Park. This area. And let's see. Who else? Tails Knuckle, can't. Knuckles doesn't go up there either. No, and Tails can't do it. So, again, it, you have to do it from the menus. But Like, I know anyway. you can't get in there. I mean, I'm sure there's a way you can break the game. Well, of course. This, you can, this game is very buggy, but we'll get to that in the... the Next, we have what is definitely the worst stage in the game. I hate Sky it. Sky Deck. Yeah. Well, that's supposed to be the entrance to the Sky Deck. That It's the eighth level for Sonic, the fourth level for Tails, and the last level for Knuckles. And they're all doing it at the same time in the story, which is kind of cool. 
but yeah, nothing, like the stage like flips around and stuff you could chalk the, the reason why you can chalk that to happening is knuckles is up there at the top you know changing the lever for looking which, is the fucking with, which is fucking with sonic and tails yeah i mean it doesn't make sense if you play knuckles because you can't flip it that crazily but I like it. It's a nice little attention to detail that I never Doesn't thought about. Doesn't mean the level's fun. It sucks. Yeah. Like, there's no good section. This level's split up into... I mean, it's uh, only kind of good with Tails, because Tails can just fly through everything. Yeah, but the platforming itself is so <laughs> small and very narrow. It's just follow the small pathway to get to the end. There's no exploration in this level whatsoever. None. I mean, there is a little bit in one section where the wind's blowing you around, but eh, it's not interesting enough to really look around at stuff. I don't know. It's the weakest level in the entire game. Next up, we have the most platformy stage in the game, which is Hot Shelter. Right. Well, Only so this is the one stage Sonic does not go to. Yeah, this level is exclusive to Big and Amy. And Gamma. Gamma oh, and Gamma. Yeah, you're right. This is the last level for Amy and Gamma and Big. And I... No, it's the second level for Amy, the last level for Big, and the last level for Gamma. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, it, it's not bad. It's all right. It feels like it was ripped out of a Mario game, to be honest. Yeah. Especially for Amy. But, like, for Big, it's literally just go down a hallway or whatever and then get to the big open area with water, and boom, catch Froggy. It's like, oh. But uh, Gamma's version, I believe, is really long. No. No, Amy's is the long one. I know. Well, I know it's Gamma's longest stage, but... Oh, by far. Yeah. But it's not, like, the worst. No. But it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, but... Eh, it's it's a, it's a level like it exists. It's not it's it's not offensive in terms of the sonic design, but it's not great or bad. You know, it just exists. Next up, we have what I believe is personally the hardest stage in the game: Lost World. Yeah, um, they made you know they made a game based off that name. Wow. That's crazy. It's the yeah. second to last level for both Sonic and Knuckles, and they're the only two who go there. And I think honestly, it's the coolest looking level in the game. I love there's a whole piece of music that is only in the ending of Sonic stage. Yeah, and then I believe it's Knuckles' like default music stage for that level. It is. And it's really good, too. Um, but it's a very... Uh, diff it's probably the hardest level in the game, I'd say. It's definitely the most difficult level in the game. Yeah, but it's really fun, like, regardless of that. I, when I first got to this level, I was stuck here for a while. Yeah, I, I always got screwed over at the mirror puzzle area or uh, the snake, the goddamn snake. Yeah. See, this game is not programmed very good in a lot of ways, so you could be standing on the... Well, first, got to raise the water all the way to the top, which is a pain in the ass. And then... Uh, unless, really pain... just, unless, you, unless you just break it with the spin dash. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, but when you get on the snake, some, a lot of times, if you're just, like, standing still, which you don't want to do... Sonic will start getting, like, shoved ba backwards off the snake for some reason, then you'll fall off. And it's I'm like, awkward, what? yeah. Yeah, so you're just kind of struggling that entire time. But it, it doesn't matter which version it is. Dreamcast, GameCube, PC port, uh, or, well, HD port. It's, it's always buggy. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, then you have, like, a, a rolling boulder coming at you that catches on fire. I don't know how rocks catch on fire, but that's besides the point. It's really cool. Uh, then you have a section with mirrors and light. Like, light. you have to, like, reflect the light off the mirror, and then you can see where you're going ahead. They give you a light, uh, electric shield to fuck with you, because at the end of that part, you have to use a light speed dash. There's and... actually... Um... This level is actually pretty big on story plot, on story development too. At the end of Sonic stage, but, yeah, but it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense because, like, in terms of how the level works out, you go into the pyramid or not pyramid, the temple, and then you just appear in the past somewhere because there's a part where you go outside and you see like 
a bunch of temples in the background and giant forests and stuff like that. It's like, where the hell is this? My you cat know? is looking at me like I just offended her entire life. He's just like, hey, don't talk about stupid hedgehogs in front of me. <laughs> you monster, don't ever do that again. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry, kitty. Um, but then we have the final level, uh, final egg, which is the first level for that's funny. They should have just named it First Egg for Gamma. Just a joke. But it's the last level for both Sonic and Amy. And it does fit the final level aesthetic. Yes, it does. You know, you got your Eggman, like, Death Egg kind of aesthetic looking thing. Metal everywhere. Robots everywhere. And uh, it's a pretty fun stage. Not it's, gonna lie. it's definitely a... I think it's one of the strongest final stages in the whole series, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, it's better than things like Eggman Land. Or even Cannon Score. Or even the end of the world. Oh, God. Yeah. Now let's talk about the bosses. They are disgusting in terms of difficulty. Absolutely piss easy, except possibly except for, Sonic's except final for, boss. Except for one, yeah. So you have Chaos Zero, which is the first boss in the just fought only a Sonic, and he's a joke. Like, you yes. just pop him in the head, that's it. But it's a good way to get used to the controls that they give you, which is nice. We didn't even talk about the homing attack for Sonic. Well, we haven't talked about the gameplay really yet. Okay. So after that, there's the Egg Hornet, which is fought by Sonic and Tails, and as Sonic, just spam the homing attack, he'll be dead in ten seconds. As a kid, I didn't know he could do that, but when I figured that out, I was like, that's... That's really bad programming, and they never fixed it either. Like, he is so much harder as Tails, but still not hard. Well, I was going to say, not, you're like so much harder, I'm like, by how much? <laughs> I mean, I mean I'm not saying he's still hard, I'm saying as Tails, he's harder because he can't homing attack. Yeah, I love that if you have no rings and jump at Eggman right before the, 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 the uh, results screen pops up, you, you have you no rings. You get drunk and die. <laughs> yeah. I think but it works with Dan, too. Yeah. It's like, I'll play with you some other... Ugh. And he falls next over. Next up, we have the first boss for Knuckles, which is Chaos 2. And all of his bosses are only Chaos, which is interesting. Which makes the final boss a little weird, and we'll get to that. So, mm. um, He's a... I find Chaos 2 to be more annoying than anything. He he's has not hard, up. though. But yeah, because he has that shield up all the damn. All you need to do is just keep gliding into him, and you'll break through the shield, and bam. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I I, I didn't know that for a while, but I saw someone do it. I was like, oh, that's how you do it faster, you know? Um, and it, it's not we, bad, but it's it, it, could, it could be worse. Next up, we have what I think is the worst boss in the game, Chaos 4. Yes, because you fight him three times. And the pat the pattern never changed. It's the same boss fight three times: Sonic, Tails, Knuckles. Yeah, and and his his patterns for attacking and showing his head to attack are so inconsistent. Uh, sometimes they'll do attacks that you've never seen before because, like like uh, a claw swipe or whatever, or uh, maybe him turning into a bunch of like different like water balls and coming after you just some attacks you're like wow i've never seen it before because the ai is so rock stupid it only used one or two attacks next up i'm gonna group all of these together because they're all the same which but is... one last thing i gotta say about ks4 uh is that if you play as tails he's actually a little easier he has less health yeah that's true very weird i'm gonna group all of these guys together because they're all the same which is the um the E-Series robots. But we didn't talk about the character battles. Fuck you. Anyway. <laughs> it's Oh no, you mean. Yeah, they're, they're terrible. Um, yeah, and they're hilarious. E-101 Beta, E-103 Delta, E-104 Epsilon, and E-105 Zeta. They're all the same. You just shoot them and they die. The only one that's like slightly different is the Zeta, I believe. He's powered, oh, yeah, by he's... Bun- powered by a bunch of Dreamcasts. Yeah. Next up, we have Amy's final boss, uh, Zero, which is the robot that chases Simon. He's a joke. Yeah, probably the most 
Probably the boss that requires probably the most thought, maybe? Not really. Okay. Of, like, all you yeah. gotta do is hit him with a hammer and then hit him again. That's all you do. It's not hard. Him into the electric barrier and bam, his head pops Which, up. there's a reference to that in Frontiers! There is? Yeah, with the sumo boss. You have to hit him to an electric fence, too. That's amazing. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Holy crap. Next up, we have Gamma's final boss, which is Beta Mark II. Yeah, which I honestly think is probably the best boss in terms of just, like, being fun. I don't agree. I don't think it's a bad boss. I don't think it's the best boss, though. Well, but isn't it cool when he's just shooting multiple spirit bombs at you? Yeah, little little Kamehamehas, yeah. Yeah, I love it. And then he just charges up one. It's so huge. You're like, whoa. Next up, we have Chaos Six, who is fought by Sonic Knuckles and kind of big. <laughs> yeah, and that boss can either last uh, five, a few minutes or five seconds, depending if you're lucky with aiming the rod. Yeah, no, it's, it. Chaos Six is easier than he should be, because like he has less health than Chaos Four. <laughs> if you use the uh, spit, if you use the light speed attack or Knuckles' uh maximum heat Knuckles attack, you, you can just... like double the damage on the attack. The only time I think I've seen that be, be done in any boss, I could be wrong. I should test that out sometime. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then we have Tails' final boss, the Egg Walker. That's a decent boss. It's sinister. Like, it's sinister as fuck. <laughs> yeah, because Eggman, uh, the voice actor for him, went, uh, Dean Bristow, went a little a little bit hard on uh, his performance, I guess you could yeah. say. Then we have Sonic's final boss, the Egg Viper. That one's probably the hardest boss. Oh, easily. Easily. The hardest the most thought. It's... Now, it's not hard for me, but as a kid, it took me so many tries. Yeah, no. So the first time I got, many. The first time I got to him, he kicked my ass. Yeah, it's crazy. And then after you beat every character story, you unlock the supersonic story. Which the yeah. whole purpose of the supersonic story is to encounter the final boss. Perfect, Perfect chaos. Oh. Yeah. Which... This is what I'm saying before. Knuckles only fights uh, Chaos. Yeah. But so Sonic, why does Sonic fight Chaos at the end? I mean, I don't know. It makes sense to me because Super Sonic and yeah, Super Son giant Sonic. Giant boss. Sonic is the one who defeats Chaos in the end, despite it being built up as like Knuckles' rival character. Mm -hmm. And this is the first of many games where Sonic is not being... You can't use Super Sonic in stages and is relegated only to the final boss. And this goes on until 06. So, get used to that. Actually, no, this goes on until Unleashed. Get yeah, used yeah, to that. The, the first <laughs> game that they made it possible for it to be playable 3D was Colors. Oh, shit. But uh, Perfect Chaos thematically makes sense as the final boss. Well, they fucked the music up. Yeah, but he's not really difficult. No, you just gotta be good at dodging his attacks. Other than that, you just go really fast through the area and boom, just run into him as fast as you can and you'll hit his brain. The continuity makes it seem like he's super powerful. But, yeah, but Super Sonic is like, hey, eat me. <laughs> if we could get a Sonic Frontiers version of that kind of boss in a remake, could you imagine oh, how crazy yeah. it would be? Oh, like perfect chaos on the scale of a Titan fight? Oh my yes. god. Because you know how big he is in the CG cutscene, right? I would shit my pants. In game, he is a fraction of the size that he is in the CG cutscene when they first show him off. Yeah. Now let's just talk about the game. The gameplay itself. The most important part of the game. In Start terms of character control... This is some of the smoothest 3D Sonic control we have. Yeah, mostly for Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. Everyone else yeah. has their own kind of physics. Amy is the worst, I honestly think, for but, uh, I think, stages. I think Sonic especially controls quite well for his first outing in 3D. And it still controls great to this day. 
it's just the bugs that can kind of ruin it, but that's just whatever. I can look past it. Yeah. He's got yeah. a spin dash. He's got a light ring, light speed attack, and what, what do they call it? The ring, light ring dash light, or something. Light speed, light speed dash. Okay, to go along a trail of rings. It's a little uh, not easy, not fun to use in this game because you have to stand, charge it up with your spin dash, walk up to the rings, and boom, Sonic Adventure Two would fix this. But uh, yeah, it, you don't get a lot of crazy things to work with with Sonic in terms of power ups, but. Other characters have their own power-ups, and they're kind of nice. So, uh, Tails is a lot like Sonic, except he can fly, his states are a lot shorter, and he races people. And he wins a ribbon. He's gonna believe in himself. Oh, he will. You just gotta believe! Oh, wait, wrong franchise. Sorry. Yeah. But, Knuckles yeah, is, um... He's different. Um, he, he, he controls like Sonic on ground, jumping, makes sense, but he has... I mean, he controls well, and admittedly in this game, I don't mind his gameplay where you have to find the Master Emerald pieces. It's very easy in this game, because the radar lets you find them all at any time and any day you want. And the areas are all condensed, so they don't take forever. And some, like, spe uh, those harder... Uh, ranks, rank A, I think it is, missions for time. Some of them expect you to finish level in like 25, 30 seconds with Knuckles. I mean, I mean, yeah, the extra stages can blow it, but the main stages aren't too bad for Knuckles. The only thing I have a problem with Knuckles in this game is the way he feels when climbing walls and digging. It doesn't feel like they got it quite mastered yet, which they would honestly master in Adventure 2 in terms of him his feeling and physics of climbing and digging into walls. But other than that, it's all right. He's pretty fun. He's got a punch attack, too. Uh, the early footage of Sonic Adventure, he had a much more animated, like, punch attack. It looked really smooth, but they just changed it for something really stiff and meh-looking, which is sad, but whatever. Then we have A. Yeah. Ooh. Worst character in the game. It's a it's a it's a clunkier Mario. I don't know if I'd go that far. Well, I mean, you run at a slow pace, you jump, but even then, it's all you have is for attacking is your hammer spin. Yeah, and most Amy of the time you're not going to want to fight us or any. Most of the time you're not going to want to fight us or anyway. It's not fun. It really is not. She just has levels that she has to do puzzle solving or running away from zero. That's literally it. And then we have literally the most pointless character in the Froggy. game. Big the fucking game. And I'm one of the weird ones that doesn't mind his gameplay. If anything, I find it kind of like a little neat to just explore some levels. It's do something different. so unnecessary. It's not terrible. But it's just not needed. It should have been a side thing, honestly. Like, yeah. after you beat the game, you unlock his story. And you can see what he was doing during all the events of the game, just for fun. But, no, they integrated him into the main plot. Like, what does he have to do with chaos and whatnot? Nothing. Only because Froggy has a tail, and that's Chaos's it, tail. It, and these they forced him in, they arbitrarily forced yeah, it's it's dumb. It's it was meant to market the Sega fishing peripheral, but yeah, no one really cared to use it for that. I've well, never used it for that, so clearly it didn't work. And then we have Gamma, who is pretty fun to play. He's got good turning. He's got good speed. Uh, great jump height, and he has a jet booster. Which obtain last item. Obtain, obtain item. item. Yeah, he's. I I like Gamma as a personality. This he's so dull, but at the same time, you can tell there's consciousness behind it. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Um. We didn't talk about the other two adventure fields yet. So the Mystic Ruins, <coughs> which is basically just um your big forest area. 
I like it. It's pretty except cool. The, except the jungle area. <clears throat> yeah, I can't say I'm a fan of jungle. Yeah, it's basically There's another mini game in there, Sand Hill. Only Tails can go to. Yeah, I wish that was a full on level because I love the aesthetic. A Sonic can do it in the menu, but he never does. Yeah, that's very weird. But um, it's it's fun. And then there's the egg carrier, which is the smallest hub world in the game. It's a space. It's not a space. It's a big battle. What, what, what's funny is in the DX port, you can like glitch out of the confines of the walls, and the ship is fucking huge because there's collision down there. And you can just run around. So the level, the ship itself is actually fucking huge, but just what you can explore on the A carrier itself is pretty small. Huh. Yeah. Just look up a video of it, and you'll be like, oh my god, this thing is fucking huge. Um, but I personally love the ever-living shit out of Sonic. Um, Same. It was the first Sonic game I had ever actually played. Because I never grew up with the Genesis. I didn't have a Saturn. My first Sega console was the Dreamcast. I started with Sonic 2. So Sonic, Sonic Adventure is... Everyone has that game that they have a really strong nostalgic attachment to. I, I have it with Crash 1. I mean, I do too, but everyone has that one game from their childhood that just made them the gamer they are. And for me, that was, that was Sonic Adventure. For me, so. it was again. For me, it was Crash Bandicoot, first game I ever played. <laughs> but I mean, I that was the first game I ever played too. But Sonic Adventure was the game that cemented me as a, a Sonic fan. And the most magical way to play it was on the Dreamcast, just because of just it, the system was magical itself. But just because it was made for that system, it's like yeah. And the VMU interactions. And Admittedly, and... it hasn't aged. The most gracefully, all the ports will tell you that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, if you want something better, like, uh, if you want the best way to play it, you get it on PC, you get better SADX. It, basically, it's just a Dreamcast version with widescreen. It's nice. Like, it's 60 the frames D, per second. The, like, the GameCube port adds, like, a mission mode and a Metal Sonic skin. But it also... All, it's all right. And it um, tries to run at 60 FPS, but it doesn't... It doesn't like it's not stable. It it will be sixty FPS in the stages, but in cutscenes it's locked to thirty still or less. I don't know what happened there, but again on the PC version it's a stable sixty in the in the stages. Yeah, it's just I don't know. This game wasn't built for sixty FPS. I don't. No, at least the cutscenes were. If they tried to do it sixty FPS with the cutscenes, it the lip the lip syncs and well. The lack thereof, lip syncing. Uh, just the audio would be out of sync. Uh, that that's happened with multiple with ports of rareware games like Banjo, D64. And like, personally, I also feel like the GameCube version just feels better to play. Not the GameCube version, the Dreamcast. Just feels better to play. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion. And so does the uh, PC version. When you add in better SADX, they make the controls a little bit better. It's weird. Like, it feels and, natural to play. And um, avoid the Xbox and the PlayStation version at all costs. Yeah, please. If you're going to get the HD version, go with the PC port, because there's so much you can do with it. So fun. So, two years later, we got a follow-up. Uh, Sonic Adventure 2, which I think we're going to actually save for a separate video, because I did not think it was going to go on this long. How did I? I was going to say, holy shit, now we got to talk about Adventure 2, but uh, that would probably be as long as this one, honestly. Yeah, so we're going to do Adventure 2 on its own. Yes. So before we go, I do want to quickly mention um, Sonic Shuffle. Mm. Don't. <laughs> yeah, and last thing for me is the Chow Garden system. It oh, was yes, 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 go ahead. It was uh, some, it's something I still love to this day. Frankie doesn't care about it, right? No, not at all. 
never okay happened. so for me i love the idea of raising little pets okay i don't know it just seemed neat to me it was a nice little way of having a gameplay loop for the adventure series you know okay i want to raise the chow i need to go to a stage get animals boom boom, boom. get better at the stages and you're pretty much set there raise the chow and on the dreamcast version it's a little it's very archaic there's no stats you just kind of have to wing it there's no reason to do any of the races it's just for fun but what was cool, and you could do it with the GameCube version, is you could take your child, put them in your VMUs if they had batteries, <clears throat> and you could take them on the go, raise them a little bit there. And if you wanted to breed the chow, you would take the two VMUs with a chow in each one and just click them together because you could link them together, which is really cool. I didn't know you could like attach two VMUs together, and then that can create an egg, and boom, you put your VMUs back in your system, the egg comes out of the machine, and that's how they do that there. Sonic Adventure 2 is relatively similar. Uh, more features, but uh, the GameCube version was so cool in terms of being able to put a chow into the tiny chow garden on the Game Boy Advance with uh, Sonic Advance 1 and 2. And, oh my god, I don't know. For me, I just love that idea. Uh, you can get exclusive items from the Tiny Shell Garden 2 to put into SA1 or 2. So that was really nice. Uh, other than that, uh, it's mandatory, I guess, if you want to get 100% in Sonic Adventure 1 for getting Metal Sonic. But Oh, that's only uh, the DX version, the Dreamcast version. Yeah, you'll get anything for the Dreamcast version. And they have the Black Market, which is really weird. They, uh, they sell children on the Black Market and eggs very weird but the it, it's kind of vanilla black market for sa1 sa2 when we get to it is a lot more beefy uh but that's all i have to say about the chow garden right now because adventure 2 is a l little bit different but enough to be the best version to play it so, so yeah so anyway um sonic shuffle um uh yeah sonic's answer to mario party and it sucks. Yeah, Frankie and I, when we hung out, we played it uh, with two other people. I was people, high as shit. I was about to say, everyone was getting high except me. And... My God. It, it was like, just one dude so passed boring. Out. One dude got so bored that he passed out because he got so high. <laughs> and, and I'm just sitting here like... Because like, we were playing the Saturn so much when we went to the Dreamcast, I said I was like bitching at you, and you were not acknowledging me. I was like, "Why are the buttons so small?" But yeah, anyway, the mini games suck. The board design sucks. Don't play yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, don't. It's even if you're curious, just don't. You're not going to have a good time. You're probably going to want to kill a baby or something like. Well, that's that's fucked up. <laughs> that, yeah, it's a little extreme. Um. Yes. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. I think that's, that's all I have to say uh, about Adventure 1. Yeah. Um, I thought we were going to do both SA Sonic Adventure games in this video. That ain't that ain't freaking happening. No. Yes. Okay. Anyway. I'm going to go ahead and close this video out now because this is going on for almost an hour just on Sonic Adventure 1. Adventure 2 will probably be as long or if not longer. So anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Or listening. Oh, yeah, whichever. The next one we're going to be doing is not Sonic Adventure 2, but it is the Spider-Man games on PS4. Yes. So we're going to be talking about Spider-Man next time. You'll be having Who a lot knows? to say about I don't that wanna... to me. I don't want to say we're going to do both because we may talk about the first game forever. We'll see. But right. yeah. until that time, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And um, if we don't do another one of these before the end of the year. Happy New Year. We'll see you guys in 2023. Saying that pretty much every time <laughs> until the end of the year. <laughs> Honestly. But anyway, take care, guys.